Welcome to the Living Well During COVID-19 training. This is split into three short sections comprising of Part 1, eating a balanced diet, physical activity and being a healthy weight. Part 2, smoking, alcohol and drugs. Part 3, mental well-being, self-care, preventing infection and goal setting. The training is being produced by the Living Well Service. Living Well aims to make the healthy choice the easy choice for people in the Bradford district. Our health can be affected by choices we make and the communities where we live, work and play. Lots of people live with long-term health conditions. Our goal is to lower the cases of these often preventable health conditions and to help people live longer, healthier lives. Living Well is about helping you recognise how you can improve your own health and well-being and find the right support to achieve a healthier lifestyle. You will find the link to the Living Well website throughout the training as a link for further support. We hope you enjoy the training and it helps support you to live a healthier, more active life. The aim of the training is to support the residents of the Bradford District to look after their health by giving tips and tools to help make the best choices about health and well-being. This is particularly important now during the COVID-19 pandemic. Taking steps to improve the immune system by focusing on steps you can control can help you and your family stay healthy. In order to stay as healthy as we can, it is important to look after ourselves. This training will help you think about your own health and well-being and that of your family and how small changes can support you to be healthier. This is particularly important right now in relation to COVID-19, being a healthy weight, eating foods which will help boost our immune system, keeping active such as walking daily, not smoking, drinking in moderation, as well as looking after our hygiene, including washing hands regularly, can help to reduce our chances of becoming seriously ill and hospitalised from the effects of COVID-19. Let's start with eating a healthy balanced diet. The Eat Well guide shows how much of what we eat overall should come from each food group to achieve a healthy balanced diet. You do not need to achieve this balance with every meal, but try to get the balance right over a day or even a week. Please note, this guidance is for the general population. If you have specific nutritional requirements, please continue to follow the advice from your health professional. The Eat Well guide does not apply to children under the age of two because they have different nutritional needs. Between the ages of two and five, children should gradually move to eating the same foods as the rest of the family in the proportion shown in the Eat Well Guide. COVID-19 is a respiratory infection that affects your lungs and airways. At this time, it is especially important to eat healthily and be a healthy weight so that our bodies are more able to fight infections such as COVID-19. As you can see, the Eat Well Guide is split into different sections. These sections are fruit and vegetables, green section, potatoes, bread, rice, pasta and other starchy carbohydrates, yellow section, beans, pulses, fish, eggs, meat and other proteins, pink section, dairy and alternatives, blue section, oils and spreads, the purple section. Aim to drink six to eight glasses of fluid every day. Water, lower fat milk and sugar-free drinks including tea and coffee all count. Fruit juices and smoothies also count towards your fluid consumption although they are a source of free sugars. Free sugar is what we call any sugar that is added to food or drink, or the sugar that is already in honey, syrup and fruit juice. And so you should limit consumption to no more than a combined total of 150 millilitres a day. As you can see from the Eat Well guide, sugar and fatty foods sit outside of the guide. This is because they are not needed in the diet and provide very little nutrition. This includes products such as chocolate, cakes, biscuits, full sugar soft drinks, butter and ice cream. However, as most of us like some of these foods and drinks, we can consume them, but not very often and in small amounts. If you consume these foods and drinks often, try to limit their consumption so that you have them less often and in smaller amounts. Sugary drinks are one of the main contributors to excess sugar consumption among children and adults in the UK. Swap sugary soft drinks for diet, sugar-free or no added sugar varieties to reduce your sugar intake in a simple step. Alcohol also contains lots of calories. The calorific content of an alcoholic drink depends on the type of alcohol, the volume served and the addition of mixers. As an example, one pint of standard strength lager contains approximately 136 calories. A 175 milliliter medium glass of wine contains approximately 135 calories and a 25 milliliter shot of spirit 
contains approximately 56 calories. Food and drinks high in fat and sugar contain a lot of calories, particularly when you're having large servings. Check the label and avoid foods which are high in fat, sugar and salt. Have a think about your own diet. Do you think you're eating the right amount of food from each food group? Or are you maybe eating too much from one section and not enough from another? Let's now have a look at each, sec each section in a little more detail. Let's start with having a look at the fruit and vegetables, the green section. Most of us don't eat enough fruit and vegetables, which we need to help us have a strong immune system and prevent us from getting poorly. Fruit and vegetables are a good source of vitamins, minerals and fibre. They should make up just over a third of the food we eat each day and we should aim to eat at least five portions of a variety of fruit and vegetables each day. Five portions sounds a lot, but it's not as difficult as you may think to consume your five portions. Choose from fresh, frozen, tinned, dried or juiced. You could try adding up your portions during the day. For example, you could have a glass of fruit juice and a sliced banana with your cereal at breakfast, a side salad at lunch, a pear as an afternoon snack, and a portion of peas or other vegetables with your evening meal. Let's now look at the potatoes, bread, rice, pasta and other starchy carbohydrates, the yellow section. Starchy food is a really important part of a healthy diet and should make up just over a third of the food we eat. Choose higher fibre, whole grain varieties when you can by purchasing whole wheat pasta, brown rice or simply leaving the skins on potatoes. Base your meals around starchy carbohydrate foods and aim to eat at least one portion with each of your main meals. So you could start the day with a whole grain breakfast cereal, choose one lower in salt and sugars, have a sandwich for lunch or round off the day with potatoes, pasta or rice as a base for your evening meal. Some people think starchy food is fattening, but gram for gram it contains less than half the calories of fat. You just need to watch the fats when you add when you're cooking and serving this sort of food, because that's what increases the calorie content. For example, cheesy or creamy pasta sauces are adding lots of butter or cheese to a sandwich. So why should we choose whole grain? Whole grain food contains more fibre than white or refined starchy food, and often more of other nutrients. We also digest whole grain food more slowly, so it can help us feel fuller for longer. Whole grain food includes whole meal and whole grain bread, pita and chapati, whole wheat pasta, brown rice, whole grain breakfast cereals and whole oats. Remember, you can also purchase high fibre white versions of bread and pasta, which will help to increase your fibre intake. If you have a child under the age of two, you can give them some whole grain foods, such as wholemeal bread, pasta and brown rice. Whole grain foods can be high in fibre and they may fill your child up before they have taken in the calories and nutrients they need from other foods. So instead, provide a mixture of white and wholemeal varieties. Let's look at the beans, pulses, fish, eggs, meat and other proteins, the pink section. These foods are sources of protein, vitamins and minerals, so it is important to eat some foods from this group. Protein is needed to build and repair muscle and tissue. Beans, peas and lentils, which are all types of pulses, are a good alternative to meat because they're naturally very low in fat and they're high in fibre, protein, vitamins and minerals, including iron. Eating a diet high in fibre is associated with a reduced risk of heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Pulses or legumes, as they are sometimes called, are edible seeds that grow in pods and include foods like lentils, chickpeas, butter beans, beans and peas, baked beans, broad beans and kidney beans, etc. Pulses are particularly important for people who don't get protein by eating meat, fish or dairy products. But pulses can also be a healthy choice for meat eaters. You can add pulses to soup, casseroles and meat sauces to add extra texture and flavour. This means you can use less meat, which makes a dish lower in fat, higher in fibre and cheaper to make. Pulses are often bought in tins. If you buy tinned pulses, check the label and try to choose ones that have no added salt or sugar. Other vegetable-based sources of protein include tofu, 
bean curd and mycoprotein, all of which are, wild, are widely available in, mo in most retailers. Nuts are high in fibre and unsalted nuts make a good snack, but they do still contain high levels of fat, so eat them in moderation. Eggs can be enjoyed as part of a healthy balanced diet, but it's best to cook them without adding salt or fat. For example, boiled or poached without added salt, scrambled without butter and using low fat milk instead of cream, Frying eggs can increase their fat content by around 50%. Aim for at least two portions of fish a week, including a portion of oily fish. Most people should be eating more fish. Examples of oily fish include salmon, trout, fresh tuna, sardines, mackerel and pilchards. Making healthier choices can help you eat meat as part of a healthy balanced diet. But some meats are high in saturated fat, which can raise blood cholesterol levels and lead to heart disease. Also, if you eat a lot of red and processed meat, it is recommended that you cut down as there's possibly a link between red and processed meat and bowel cancer. However, red meat in small quantities provides us with iron and meat is also one of the main sources of vitamin B12. Meats such as chicken, pork, lamb and beef are all rich in protein. A balanced diet can include protein from meat as well as from non-animal sources such as beans and pulses. So how to make healthier choices when buying meat? So go for the leanest option you can afford. As a rule, the more white you can see on the meat, the more fat it contains. So buy leaner cuts of meat. Drain any excess fat off meat when you've, when you've cooked it. For example, when you've cooked beef or lamb. If you are buying pre-packed meat, check the nutrition label to see how much fat it contains and compare products. Go for turkey and chicken without the skin, as these are lower in fat, and remove the skin before cooking. Try to limit processed meat products such as sausages, salami, pate and beef burgers, because these are generally high in fat. They are often high in salt too. Try to limit meat products in pastry such as pies and sausage rolls, because they are often high in fat and salt. Cut off any visible fat and skin before cooking. Grill meat rather than frying. Fried chicken breast in breadcrumbs contains nearly six times as much fat as chicken breast grilled without the skin. Don't add extra fat or oil when cooking meat. And try using smaller quantities of meat and more vegetables, pulses and starchy foods in dishes such as stews, curries and casseroles. Next is the dairy and alternatives section, the blue section. Try to have some milk and dairy food or dairy alternatives such as cheese, yoghurt and fromage frais. These are good sources of protein and vitamins and they're also an important source of calcium which helps to keep our bones strong. Full fat cheeses and dairy products are recommended up to the age of two as young children need fat and energy to help them grow. The fat in milk provides calories for young children and also contains essential vitamins. After the age of two, Children can gradually move to semi-skimmed milk as a drink, as long as they're eating a varied and balanced diet and growing well and not told otherwise from a health professional. Children five years and older are able to have skimmed or 1% fat milk as a drink. But for older children and adults, it's a good idea to go for lower fat dairy products because having too much fat in our diet can result in becoming overweight. Diet high in saturated fat can also lead to, a ra to raised levels of cholesterol in the blood and this, and this can put you at increased risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Some dairy food can be high in fat and saturated fat, but there are plenty of lower fat options to choose from. Go for lower fat and lower sugar products where possible. For example, why not try 1% fat milk, which contains about half the fat of semi-skimmed milk without a noticeable change in taste or texture or reduced fat cheese, which is also widely available. Or you could have just a smaller amount of the full fat varieties less often and grate it to make it go further. When buying dairy alternatives, go for unsweetened calcium fortified versions like soya milks, soya yogurts and soya cheeses. They all count as part of this food group and can make good alternatives to dairy products. Cheese is a great source of protein and calcium which is often high in saturated fat and salt. This means eating too much could lead to high cholesterol and high blood pressure, increasing your risk of heart disease. 
In the UK, the standard portion size is 30 grams, and this is the size of a small matchbox or two and a half dominoes. A 30 gram portion of cheese provides 7% of your daily calories, and there can be more salt in a portion of cheddar than in a packet of crisps. A 30 gram portion of cheddar provides over a quarter of an adult's daily requirements. However, other dairy products such as yogurt and milk are just as good for the bones and much lower in fat and salt. Cheeses to have occasionally due to the high fat content include mascarpone, cheddar, red leicester, double gloucester, parmesan, brie and paneer. The best cheese options to go for and eat regularly include reduced fat cottage cheese or quark. Even regular cottage cheese, either plain or with pineapple or other additions, are still quite low in fat. Let's look at the oils and spreads, the purple section. It is important to get some fat in your diet. Fat is a source of essential fatty acids which the body cannot make itself. Fat helps the body absorb vitamins A, D and E. These vitamins are fat soluble, which means they can only be absorbed with the help of fats. But foods that are high in fat, salt and sugar have been placed outside of the Eat Well Guide as they are not necessary as part of a healthy balanced diet and most of us need to cut down on these. Generally, we are eating too much saturated fat and need to reduce our consumption. If you want to reduce your risk of heart disease and lower your cholesterol, it's best to reduce your overall fat intake and swap saturated fats for unsaturated fats. Saturated fats are mainly from animal sources and can be found in both sweet and savoury foods. Examples include fatty cuts of meat, meat products, including sausages and pies, butter, ghee and lard, cheese, especially hard cheese like cheddar, cream, sour cream and ice cream, some savoury snacks like cheese crackers, chocolate, biscuits, cakes and pastries, palm oil, coconut oil and coconut cream. Unsaturated fats are healthier fats that are usually from plant sources and in liquid form as oil, for example vegetable, rapeseed, olive, corn, sunflower oils, some nuts, oily fish such as salmon, kippers, sardines, mackerel and fresh tuna. Swapping to unsaturated fats will help to reduce cholesterol in the blood. Therefore, it is important to get most of our fat from unsaturated oils. Choosing lower fat spreads as opposed to butter is a good way to reduce your saturated fat intake. Unsaturated fats can be either monounsaturated or polyunsaturated. Remember that all types of fat are high in energy and should be limited in the diet. A gram of fat, whether it's saturated or unsaturated, provides 9 calories a gram, compared with 4 calories a gram for both carbohydrate and protein. Any fat that's not used by your body cells or turned into energy is converted into body fat. Likewise, unused carbohydrates and proteins are also converted into body fat. Foods that are lower in fat are not necessarily lower in calories. Sometimes the fat is replaced with sugar and the food may end up having a similar calorie content to the regular version. So let's have a think about how you can reduce your saturated fat. Swap butter, lard, ghee and coconut and palm oils with small amounts of monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats such as olive, rapeseed or sunflower oils and spreads. Choose lean cuts of meat and make sure you trim any excess fat and remove the skin from chicken and turkey. Instead of pouring oil straight from the bottle, use a spray oil to measure out your oils with a teaspoon. Read food labels to help you make choices that are lower in saturated fat. Opt to grill, bake, steam, boil or poach your foods. Make your own salad dressings using ingredients like balsamic vinegar, low fat yoghurt, lemon juice and herbs with a dash of olive oil. Use semi skimmed 1% or skimmed milk rather than whole or condensed milk. Look at the traffic light system on food packaging. Try and choose foods to eat more often which have more green and orange in fat, sugar and salt and less red. Any food with more red try and eat just occasionally. 
Also, use the Change for Life Food Scanner app to find healthier food choices when you're shopping. The link can be found on the bottom of the slide. This slide shows the maximum daily amounts of sugar recommended for the different age groups, and these may surprise you. 5 cubes of sugar for 4 to 6 year olds, 6 cubes for 7 to 10 year olds, and 7 cubes for anyone over the age of 11. 1 cube of sugar is equivalent to 1 flat teaspoon of sugar. There are large amounts of sugar in cereals, particularly children's cereals, drinks and snacks. Sugar has little nutritional value and is 4 calories per gram. Children are having twice as much sugar as they should have. They are getting half their sugar intake from unhealthy snacks and drinks. Free sugars are found in foods such as sweets, cakes, biscuits, chocolate and some fizzy drinks and juice drinks. These are the sugary foods we should cut down on. For example, a can of cola can have as much as 9 cubes of sugar, which is more than the recommended daily limit for adults. Sugars also occur naturally in foods such as fruit, vegetables and milk, but we don't need to cut down on these types of sugar. Reducing sugar in drinks. Instead of sugary fizzy drinks or sugary squash, go for water, lower fat milk or sugar free diet or no added sugar drinks. While the amount of sugar in whole and lower fat milk is the same, choosing lower fat milk reduces your saturated fat intake. Even unsweetened fruit juices and smoothies are sugary, so limit the amount you have to no more than 150 millilitres a day. If you prefer fizzy drinks, try diluting no added sugar squash with sparkling water. If you take sugar in hot drinks or add sugar to your breakfast cereal, gradually reduce the amount until you, until you can cut it out altogether. Alternatively, switch to a sweetener. The NHS Change for Life website has more tips to help you cut back on sugary drinks. And reducing sugar in food. Rather than spreading high, sh high sugar jam, marmalade, syrup, chocolate spread or honey on your toast, try a lower fat spread, reduce sugar jam or fruit spread, sliced banana or lower fat cream cheese. Check the traffic light label on food packaging to help you pick the foods with less added sugar or go for the reduced or lower sugar version. Try reducing the sugar you use in your recipes. It works for most things except jam, meringues and ice cream. Choose tins of fruit in juice rather than syrup. Choose unsweetened whole grain breakfast cereals that aren't frosted or coated with chocolate or honey. Choose unsweetened cereal and try adding some fruit for sweetness which will contribute to your five a day. Sliced bananas, dried fruit and berries are all really good options. The Be Food Smart app from Change for Life can help you check how much sugar you or your child is having. Using your smartphone, the app can scan the barcode on food packets to find out exactly how much sugar is in it. And snacks. Healthier snack options are, are those without added sugar, such as fruit, fresh fruit, fresh tinned or frozen, unsalted nuts, unsalted rice cakes, oat cakes or homemade plain popcorn. If you're not ready to give up your favourite flavours, you could start by having less. Instead of two biscuits in one sitting, try having one. If, 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 you snack, if your snack has two bars, have one and share the other, or save it for another day. If you are an all or nothing type person, you could find something to do to take your mind off food on some days of the week. When shopping, look out for lower sugar and lower fat versions of your favourite snacks. Buy smaller packs or skip the family bags and just go for the normal sized ones instead. Here are some lower calorie substitutes for popular snacks. Cereal bars. Despite their healthy image, many cereal bars can be high in sugar and fat. Look out for bars that are lower in sugar, fat and salt. Chocolate. Swap for a lower calorie hot, in hot instant chocolate drink. You can also get chocolate with coffee and chocolate with malt varieties. Biscuits. Swap for oat cakes, oat biscuits or unsalted rice cakes which also provide fibre. Cakes. Swap for a plain currant bun, fruit scone or malt loaf. If you add toppings or spreads, use them sparingly or choose lower fat and lower sugar varieties. Dried fruits such as raisins, dates and apricots are high in sugar and can be bad for your dental health because it sticks to your teeth. 
To prevent tooth decay, dried fruit is best enjoyed at meal times as part of a dessert, for example, rather than as a snack. Take a moment to read through the top tips for healthy eating. If you would like to learn more about eating healthily and achieving a balanced diet, here are some websites you might like to visit. So let's do a short quiz to see what you can remember from the healthy eating section. Number one, which of the following are good ways to cut down on fat? Choose two answers. A. Choosing lean cuts of meat and going for leaner mins. B. Frying eggs instead of boiling them. C. Grilling and roasting meat instead of frying it. Or D. Eating the skin on chicken. Number two. Why do foods high in fat, salt and sugar sit outside of the Eat Well Guide? A. You can eat as much of them as you like. B. They are part of a healthy balanced diet. Or C. These foods are not needed in our diet, so should be eaten less often and in smaller amounts. So the answers are Question number one A. Choosing lean cuts of meat and going for leaner mince and C. Grilling and roasting meat instead of frying it. Question number two The answer is C. These foods are not needed in our diet, so should be eaten less often and in smaller amounts. Whatever your age, there's strong scientific evidence that being physically active can help you lead a healthier and happier life. Research shows that physical activity can also boost self-esteem, mood, sleep quality and energy, as well as reducing your risk of stress, depression, dementia and Alzheimer's disease. It's medically proven that people who do regular physical activity have up to 35% lower risk of coronary heart disease and stroke up to 50% lower risk of type 2 diabetes, up to a 50% lower risk of colon cancer, up to a 20% lower risk of breast cancer, a 30% lower risk of early death, up to an 83% lower risk of osteoarthritis, up to a 68% lower risk of hip fracture, a 30% lower risk of falls among older adults, up to a 30% lower risk of depression and up to a 30% lower risk of dementia. So what is the single best thing we can do for our health? It's exercise. Click on the link on the slide to watch a YouTube video produced by Dr. Mike Evans. It explains that exercise is the single best thing you can do for your health. Being active for 20 to 30 minutes per day or 150 minutes per week has been shown to offer lots of health benefits. Even if all you do is go for a brisk walk with your dog, any amount of physical activity, however small, is good for you. Continuing to enjoy local walks or a brisk walk with your dog, jogs or cycles are a great way to clear your head and stay active. Being physically active during the COVID-19 outbreak is especially important for your physical and mental health. It can enhance your mood, well-being and energy levels by helping to reduce stress, anxiety and depression. So let's have a look at what counts. To stay healthy, adults should try to be active every day and aim to achieve at least 150 minutes of physical activity over a week through a variety of activities. This could be split into 30 minutes five times a week or even breaking your 30 minutes into two lots of 15 minutes or three lots of 10 minutes. For most people, the easiest way to get moving is to make activity part of everyday life like walking or cycling, instead of using the car to get around. However, the more you do, the better, and taking part in activities such as sports and exercise will make you even healthier. For any type of activity to benefit your health, you need to be moving quick enough to raise your heart rate, breathe faster and feel warmer. This level of effort is called moderate intensity activity. If you are working at a moderate intensity, you should still be able to talk, but you won't be able to sing the words to a song. This is equivalent to a brisk walk. 
An activity where you have to work even harder is called vigorous intensity activity. There is substantial evidence that vigorous activity can bring health benefits over and above that of moderate activity. You can tell when it's vigorous activity because you are breathing hard and fast and your heart rate has gone up quite a bit. If you are working at this level, you won't be able to say more than a few words without pausing for a breath. Examples of this would be jogging, playing football or an exercise class such as aerobics. If you prefer vigorous intensity activity, then you can do this for 75 minutes per week or even a combination of moderate and vigorous. As well as heart health, muscle strengthening activities are also really important and are recommended on at least two days per week. This doesn't mean having to use heavy weights in the gym. It could include digging in the garden or carrying heavier bags of shopping. This is in addition to the 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity per week. For anyone aged 65 or older, to support balance and coordination, it is recommended that these activities are carried out on at least two days a week and can be done at home. Further links to help with ideas can be found later on in this section. Finally, we all need to limit time spent sitting for extended periods. This would include watching TV, using iPads and phones, playing on Xboxes and Playstations etc. Engaging in a healthy lifestyle with a disability can be a daunting task. Physical activity generally requires elements of strength, endurance, balance and coordination that are taken for granted. In people with disabilities, one or more physical attributes might be affected by disability, which limits access to sport, fitness and work or household related physical activity. There are many benefits of taking part in physical activity, suitable to your needs. Give it a go and enjoy what you do. Take a look at the slide for some of the benefits. So how much physical activity should children and young people aged 5 to 18 do to keep healthy? Children and young people need to do two types of physical activity each week. These are aerobic exercise and exercises to strengthen their muscles and bones. They should also aim for an average of at least 60 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity a day across the week. Take part in a variety of types and intensities of physical activity across the week to develop movement skills, muscles and bones and reduce the time spent sitting or lying down and break up long periods of not moving with some activity. Aim to spread activity throughout the day. All activities should make you breathe faster and feel warmer. So what counts as moderate activity? Examples would be walking to school, playground activities, riding a scooter, skateboarding, rollerblading, walking the dog and cycling on level ground or cycling on ground with few hills. And what activities strengthen muscles and bones? Examples include taking into account the age of the child or young person, walking, running, games such as tug of war, skipping with a rope, swinging on playground equipment bars, gymnastics, climbing, sit-ups, press-ups and other similar exercises, basketball, dance, football, rugby, tennis, rock climbing, resistance exercises with exercise bands, weight machines or handheld weights, netball, hockey, badminton and martial arts. Being physically active every day is important for the healthy growth and development of babies, toddlers and preschoolers. For this age group, activity of any intensity should be encouraged, including light and more energetic physical activity. Babies under one year should be encouraged to be active throughout the day, every day, in a variety of ways, including crawling. If they're not yet crawling, encourage them to be physically active by reaching and grasping, pulling and pushing, moving their head, body and limbs during daily routines and during supervised floor play. Try to include at least 30 minutes of tummy time spread throughout the day when they're awake. Once babies can move around, encourage them to be as active as possible in a safe and supervised play environment. Toddlers aged one to two should be physically active every day for at least 180 minutes, three hours. The more the better. This should be spread throughout the day, including playing outdoors. The 180 minutes can include light activities such as standing up, moving around, 
rolling and playing, as well as more energetic activity like skipping, hopping, running and jumping. Active play, such as using a climbing frame, riding a bike, playing in water, chasing games and ball games is the best way for this age group to get moving. Preschoolers aged 3 to 4 should spend at least 180 minutes, 3 hours a day doing a variety of physical activities spread throughout the day, including active and outdoor play. The more the better. The 180 minutes should include at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity. Children under 5 should not be inactive for long periods except for when they're asleep. Watching TV, travelling by car, bus or train, or being strapped in a buggy for long periods are not good for a child's health and development. Physical activity ideas for children under 5. All movement counts, the more the better. Here are a few ideas. Tummy time, playing with blocks and other objects, messy play, jumping, walking, dancing, swimming, playground activities, climbing, active play like hide and seek, throwing and catching, scooting, riding a bike, outdoor activities and skipping. Here are some top tips to get moving. Walk or cycle part of your journey to work or the shops. Get off before your usual bus stop to walk part of the way. If you drive, park further away from your workplace and walk or cycle the rest of the way. Go for a walk or cycle with your friend rather than meeting for a coffee. Set an alarm on your phone to move every 30 minutes. Try to fit in exercise before or after work or even during your lunch break. Lots of gardening can provide a good workout. Exercise in front of the TV or try an online video workout. Also, take a moment to look at the additional ones on the slide. More information can be found on these websites. This includes ready-made exercise plans and workouts to help you get going. As you will see, one of the local support links is for BEEP. Bradford Encouraging Exercising People is a local physical activity referral service that encourages and supports people to become more active more often. BEEP is a great way for people with long-term health conditions to increase physical activity levels and improve their health. The BEEP team will complete a health assessment and you will be signposted towards exercise options that best suit you. You may also be offered some discounted activities. Ask at your local GP practice for a referral to the BEEP service. Your GP, nurse or any other health professional can complete a referral form for you. So let's do a short quiz and see how much you have learned from the physical activity section. Question number one. How much exercise is recommended for adults? A. An hour of vigorous exercise such as circuit training or an aerobics class once a week. B. An hour of light exercise twice a week. C. At least two and a half hours of moderate intensity activity per week or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity. D. An hour of vigorous intensity activity per day. Question number two. Which of the below are simple ways to increase your physical activity? There could be more than one answer. A. If possible, take the stairs instead of the lift. B. Walk short journeys. C. Park at the back of the car park. D. Set an hourly timer to remind yourself to move. And the answers are question number one. C. At least two and a half hours of moderate intensity activity per week or 75 minutes of vigorous activity. Question number two. All answers are correct. Gaining weight is often a gradual process. It happens over the years as a result of modern day life and the odd unhealthy habit. Weight gain occurs when you regularly eat and drink more calories than you burn through normal bodily functions and physical activity. Extra weight causes fat to build up around vital organs, making it harder for the body to fight against diseases like cancer, heart disease and now COVID-19. If you are overweight or living with obesity, Lowering your weight can help reduce your risk of developing serious diseases. If you would like to check your BMI or your child's BMI, you can use the link given on the slide. Sometimes it can be hard to make changes to our habits and lifestyle, even when we want to. 
One way to motivate yourself is to think about what your million pound reason would be. For example, if you feel that you are eating too many takeaways each week, if I offered you a million pounds to stop eating them for a month, would you do it? More than likely your answer is yes. So think about what your million pound reason to change would be. Is it to help reduce your risk of getting type 2 diabetes? Fit into a dress for a special occasion? Have more energy to run around with children? Or even a more long term goal of wanting to complete a 5k charity run? Thinking of a million pound reason when making changes can be really motivating.